Hey everyone, I'm just going to solve this question that a student submitted to me today. Um, I thought that it might be a good one for you guys to practice if you are taking uh, you know, finance um, or, or any course that has stock valuation uh, in it. So in this one it says this, this company just paid a dividend of $3.50. So this is D0, it just paid it. And the growth rate in the dividends is expected to be a constant 5% per year indefinitely. So that means that the dividend next year will be 5% higher and that'll continue basically forever. Then it says investors require a 14% return on the stock for the first three years. So for the first three years, so from here to here, our return is 14%. After that, for the next three years, Remember, the dividend is still growing at 5% per year indefinitely. So for the next three years, the return, the required return is 12%. And then after that, it remains perpetual or perpetually at 10%. What is the price of the share? Okay, there's quite a bit going on here. Uh, there's a few ways to go about this. Um, I would start by finding each of those dividends. It's not ideal, but it can be done. So that means this first dividend here, which I would call D1, is 350 times 1.05. That is 3.675. And I'm going to repeat that process by taking the previous dividend and multiplying it by 1.05. So the next one would be uh, 3.8588. I'll keep four decimal places. Okay, so now I'm going to hit fast forward and do this all the way until uh, here. Okay, so we found all of our dividends. What we're going to do now is starting from the right-hand side where we have the perpetuity. So over here, this dividend at time seven is the first dividend for the perpetual portion of this cash flow. So I'm going to use that to find the present value at time six. So I would take my dividend at time seven, so four point, so I'm basically doing this, dividend at time seven divided by rate minus growth rate. So 4.9249 over the rate of return, which is 10% minus 0 0.05. So that is 98.498. And then I'm going to take that value and discount it all the way back to time zero. By discounting it. Okay. So now we have all of our dividends up until time six. We also have the present value of the stock at time six. The goal now would be to find the present value of everything. And this is where it can get a bit complicated because the rate keeps changing. So for example, this is the present value of time six over here. If I want to get it back to time zero, I need to discount three years at 12% and another three years at 
which means that would be 98.498 divided by, so I'm discounting at 12% for three years. And then I'll take that answer and discount it at 14% for another three years. And again, what, what I've done is I've taken this and I've returned it back to time zero, the present day. Now we're going to repeat that for every one of those other dividends. And we'll start from the right. D6. D6 is at the same point in time as PV6. So it's going to uh, basically undergo the exact same discounting, right? 12% for three years, 14% for three years. So what you can actually do here is add this one, add your dividend six to uh, the numerator here, since those are both going to be discounted um, equally. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, for the next one, dividend at time five is 4.47. This one is going to be discounted at 12% for two years and then 14% for three years, right? Again, we're going from time five, so two periods at 12%, three periods at 14%. And we're going to repeat that over and over again. So D4 now, 4.2543 divided by 1.12. So we're discounting it at 12% one time and then 14% three times. D3 is 4.0517. So this one now only needs to be discounted at 14%. We've reached this point of our timeline. So it's going to be discounted by 14% three times. The next one, which is D2, 3.8588 will be discounted at 14% two times. And finally, 3.675, that is your D1, will be discounted at 14% only once. And after we punch this whole thing into our calculator, we'll have the price of this stock, the present value of the stock. Okay, so assuming I didn't punch that in wrong on my calculator, I got 63.61. You guys will let me know in the comments if you got something different, but that is how I would solve this question.